proper pre-warm motoring. Let's put it through in the gears. Pulls very nicely. Certainly better than any uh, period Jag. Oh yes. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. You know, the 1937 Jaguar SS100, one of the most iconic sports cars of all times. This is the classic lines of what people think a pre-war sports car looks like. Unfortunately, this is not a real uh, SS100, but an exact copy. An exact copy is the best way to say it. It's not a replica car. It's not one of those kit cars. It's just a hand-built car that in every way mirrors the actual 1937 SS100. In fact, the only thing that makes you think it's not real, put a little oil in, okay, there we go. See, now with a bit of oil underneath it, real Jaguar enthusiasts will go, that can't be, oh, it is a real one, look, it's got, it's got oil underneath it. So that's really the only way to tell this from the actual thing. This was built by my good friend Jason Land at XK's Unlimited. You know Jason, if you've been to this website, God, you've seen the XKEs, the 120s. He built my 120 almost 30 years ago, and I'm still driving that one. Uh, he just does beautiful, beautiful work. Uh, he's here to tell us about it. Come on in, Jason. How are you? Good, Jay. Good to see you again. Well, you've topped yourself. This one is really terrific. I'm, I'm not a fan of replicas because they always have that sort of odd, there's always something off. Yes. You know, I used to love the Auburn Boattail Speedster the original car, the proportions all look fantastic. Then they started making these replicas where the fenders are a bit bigger and everything was wider and it, it and they, and then I hated them after that, you know? You know, the beauty of a car is their proportions. And right. as soon as you change that, you ruin the car. There's not a dimension on this car that is an exact of 1937. And the fun thing is, you use all proper Jaguar running gear, correct? It's all running gear, but it's all out of a mid-80s sedan, so right, it drives okay. wonderful, but it looks vintage. Yeah, I mean, I could not tell it from the real thing. I'm trying to see, because there's always, some, maybe the seat belts. The seat belts might give That's it away. That's the only giveaway, is the yeah, seat belts, yeah, yes. But everything else appears to be uh, proper. So wh what do we have here? This aluminum hood. Aluminum hood in front splash pan. Right. The rest of the body is fiberglass, but it's mm -hmm. reinforced with a steel subframe. It's real solid. Okay. It runs all independent suspension, four-wheel disc brakes, rack and pinion steering, oh. but the brakes are covered by fake drums, so even that looks real. Yeah, they do look real. So you have a disc hidden in there. Yes, okay. there's a, a vented disc rotor behind it. And it can't weigh 2,000 pounds. What does it weigh? About 1850. 1850, It, it okay. goes down the road just, just fine. Yeah, oh, well, very nice. I mean, yeah, it all, you know, years ago, we were talking about this. Uh, the famous musician, jazz musician, Mel Torme, had an SS100. And 30 years ago, I had a chance to buy it for what seemed like ridiculous money at the time. It was $80,000. Well, that's ridiculous. <laughs> of course, now they're a half a million dollars. I should, should have bought that car. Could have, would have, But that's have. the same car that turned you on to antique cars. In 1962, then. I went to the Beverly Hilton Concourse yeah. with my neighbor, who was a car guy. Right. And he showed up in that SS, and I just fell in love with yeah. dirty styling and vintage cars. I mean, it's hard to believe in 62, that SS... Is like looking at a mid '80s sedan. Now. I know. I mean, proportionately. <laughs> well, when I was 12, that seemed really yeah, ancient. Exactly. Exactly. So, where do you get the headlights? Do you, you don't make these, do you? No, there's actually a company in England that recreates all '30s headlights. Right. So these two headlights and these two uh, driving lights are recreations. You know, some of the replicas use a sealed beam inside a just a generic can. Right. These are exactly as original. Yeah. Those four headlights cost quite a bit. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. And the proper grill and everything else. Can Every we... piece of chrome trim on this will fit a 37 SS. Really? In fact, some of the restorers use this company's chrome trim to restore them. Okay. And what's the name of that company? Suffolk Sports Cars. Suffolk Sports Cars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's put their website up in case somebody uh, would like to. Uh, these would look good on a number of cars. Oh, yeah. Regardless. Actually, I found a pair of these on eBay, yeah. and I made a set of lights for my pool table out of them. They look great. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Can we open the hood sure. we have here? <laughs> Proper creaking? Exactly. Okay. Metal creak. All right. So there's your modern Jaguar based on the 1949 XK. Right, engine. it's a standard XK engine. This is out of a mid-80s XJ6. Right. The only thing we've changed, we put SUs on it to give it a more vintage feel. Right. And 
<laughs> we put an oil tank, uh, uh, the oil pan is actually out of a British Army tank. Oh, okay. Because they use the same engine in the Army tanks, and it's just a big capacity, and it looks vintage. Oh, I see. So you wanted more capacity. Right. Okay. It uh, just looks more, more the period look. Okay. Yeah, very nice. Now, the original engine in these, these was also a six-cylinder, what, three and a half liter? Correct? Yes, it was a push rod. It was actually right. a standard motor. Right. The original SS cars were really just standard cars. Standard was a car company right. that he rebodied with his fancy bodywork. Now, what a lot of people might not realize is Jaguar was called Standard and SS before the war. They were SS cars before right. the war, but for some reason, SS didn't have a good connotation. No, no, after the whole Nazi dust up there. If that, you look uh, at even the emblems on here, the, the script yeah. was even the same as the... Yeah, it looks very dramatic. So yeah, so it the, didn't have a good connotation. No, so so technically, when these were new, no one called them Jaguars. Right, they call them SS. Okay, very nice. Okay. And it fits in there nicely. How much heavier is this than the engine that was in it? Do you know? Oh, I wouldn't say it's a big dramatic difference. I mean, right. this has got an overhead cam, but it's an aluminum head, and the right. originals had a cast iron head. Right. So the engine is basically stock, so you, you, you haven't done cams. And we put a mild cam in it. We put have. a big valve head on it. Just oh. give it a little extra. It's got about 230 horsepower. Okay. But in this light, a car, and first of all, you're only running on three-inch wide tires. You're not going to go that fast. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. Well, okay, you are. All right, thank you. And the transmission is? This one has a Jaguar all-synchro four-speed with overdrive. Now, what we, would that have been out of, XK or something? Um, that actually, that was only used for two years in the mid-60s in a sedan. Before that, the all they didn't have an all-synchro. It had a crash-first okay. gear, which is not as nice to drive. Now, let's take a look at the dashboard. Now, the gauges look fairly modern. Uh, is that the same script and typeface yeah. that they use? It's funny because that looks almost like... A retro, yeah. somebody doing a retro version, you know what I mean? With, sort of with modern silk screening or whatever it might be. But that's exactly the way they were, huh? Yeah. I always thought it would be the old chronometric looking. Smith. Well, these would have moved with a chronometric movement. Yeah. They don't have chronometric movement. Are they uh, sm uh, Smith? They're Smiths, yes. Okay, very nice. Very cool. Even all the dash layout, everything is, is you know, as original. Yeah. I always like the smooth leather seats sometimes as opposed yeah. to the you know, quilted look. Uh, and it's got a top, which is It's got a right. top and tonneau, so it's, you know, and, and the side curtains. Oh, it it's an all-weather some... car. It even has a heater. Yeah, it's an all-weather car. Right. Yeah, yeah, sure it is. <laughs> Optimistically speaking. Assuming the weather doesn't deviate much between 74 and 78 degrees. And the windshield falls down. It does. You'll, you'll okay. experience that later. So all these places you could get from Suffolk, all these pieces you get from Suffolk mm -hmm. sports cars. Yes, okay. they yeah, recreate it all. Done. Yeah. Y you know, England has some of these wonderful little manufacturers that make... It is. Like three of things, you know. They make three of them, and you go, you know, I need four. Ah! And they can't, they can't fill the order. I mean, <laughs> You're I not mean, exaggerating. I mean, it's hilarious yeah. to me. Because I meet these wonderful English craftsmen, and it'll take weeks to make some part. And it's perfect. Then you go, can you make me two more? No. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. So I can't do that. So I can't do that. Oh. And I love the Brooklyn screens. Very nice. Did the original car have dual exhausts? Well, you know, these were a hand-built car. Right. They came single, dual, two on one side. This one has dual on each side. You no, know, you should run for office. That's the best political answer. Did they have that originally? Many cars can be ordered any way you want. You think so, I could join the Republican Party? I'm they gonna, need one more candidate. Well, I've got to tell you, you could fit in. But actually, it looks good. It looks good. Did they have dual... Uh, Rear lights like this, or is this just a concession for safety? No, this, this is called the Owl's Eye taillight, and it was made just for the SS. But, but they just had one, right? Not two. Did they have two back well, the in the day? The Le Mans racing model had two. Oh, okay. Okay. So how does it work? Someone wants one of these. They order it from you, and then you build the car to spec? Occasionally. Yeah. Most of the time, I build one for myself. Yeah. This is I did for myself. Yeah. Someone comes along and offers me more than I can refuse. Okay. I see. Well, it's just a beautiful, beautiful car. I mean, it's, it uh, is an eye catcher. I, I showed one of these once and parked it next to an original, and the owner of the original came over and complimented me on what a nice restoration it was. Oh, he didn't know it oh, wasn't fake. Oh, there you go. Well, I must admit the proportions are just perfect. You know, you don't realize how hard this is to do until you see somebody who's done <laughs> done a bad one, and you go, you go, I hate the look of that. You know, to me, the most maligned car in history is the '29 SSK Mercedes. You know, Excalibur did a version of it. When you put it on a Volkswagen chassis, oh, it the, cannot look the, right. The, one of my favorite ads was from the 60s. It was how you could build your own SSK. And 
the guy had all the parts laid out in the garage floor with the Volkswagen engine, and the wife is handing him a wrench, and the little toddler is giving him a screwdriver, and oh, they're all building the car together. Right. Well, that's, <laughs> you, you, you want to get a divorce fast, just build a car with your family. In that yeah. era, 80% yeah. of the kid cars sold never got completed. No, they never got yeah. completed. No, no. So that's what I mean. So this, this is not a kid. This is a true replica, meaning an exact copy. Okay, with the exception of the modern drivetrain, which I think you would want. Uh, it, it is uh, very tempting. Can we take it for a ride? Of course. Let's do it. Well, the funny thing is, you know, if you drove an original car, I think you'd be disappointed in it. You know, after driving this. Oh, of course. Yeah. A new, you know, original SS you wouldn't drive. Now, does this have a live rear axle? Does that have independent? No, independent. Wow, okay. Just, yeah, just like an XJ6. We've yeah. narrowed it to fit the original track. Right. Wow. I mean, it rides very comfortably. Yeah. So I'm saying you go cross country in this yeah. thing. The only thing I would change, I would have maybe a little sportier exhaust, just a bit yeah. more rasp in it, you know? It's How many actual real SS's, in the 90s and 100s, that you are a couple out hundred. There, you know? I mean, worldwide. It was a popular car back in the day, wasn't it? Yeah, but it was depression era. There wasn't that many people that could afford yeah. them. Crazy expensive or just? No, actually, I mean, Jaguar was always that second yeah. tier down. Right. You know, where Bugattis and Duesenbergs were the high end. Right. This was mid-range. Mid, mid yeah. And they were always built to a price. That's why they were <coughs> somewhat less than reliable. Is the steering unassisted? I think it is. Is it? Yeah. No. Oh, you have power steering here? No, it's no, not power steering, but oh, it is, okay. you, when you got three inch tires, you don't need a lot of help. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very light. Yeah. You get a lot of road feel. You know, if this had modern six, seven inch wide rims, it'd be hard to steer. Yeah, what was the normal horsepower with the original car? About 90 horse, 100 yeah. horse? Yeah. I think the SS 90 was 90 horse and the SS 100 yeah. was 100 horse. That makes horse. sense. It's funny how 200 miles an hour has become the new 100 miles an hour, oh. you know. I mean, the 427 Cobra, which for almost most of our lives was the ultimate. Yeah. You know, a good, the new GTI Volkswagen would outrun it. I know. I mean, this engine could go 200,000 miles, no problem. And this Jaguar twin cam, it's safe to say it's probably the small block Chevy of England. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they built this from 48 yeah. to 87. And they even used them in British tanks. Yeah, that's amazing. Is it a cast iron block or aluminum block? Cast iron block. Yeah. There is a company that makes an aluminum block version of them with four bolt mains. I'd yeah. love to have one for my race car, but they're yeah. way expensive. Really pretty crazy? Yeah. What am I hearing? I don't know. I'm just developing a squeak. I'm not sure what it is. It's a chirping. Yeah. It sounds like a pushing. Yeah. I hope it's not a wheel bearing or something. Huh? Hope it's not a wheel bearing or something. Doesn't sound like a wheel bearing. But this is where a car like this shines. You know, these fast two lane roads. Because these are the roads that existed when this car was built. Exactly. There was no freeways in 37. No, and of course this one could do a freeway all day long if you wanted it to, but. like a Grand Touring sports car, isn't it? That's what it was, really. It was yeah. more on the Grand Touring side. Because in 37, this was actually considered a big car. Yeah. Well, a big, powerful car, certainly. Yeah. Compared to 10 horsepower yeah, the little, little Fords and what was available. Well, like the Squires and MGs yeah, yeah. and stuff of that age were, you know, one and a quarter liter engines. Proper pre-war motoring. This is a classic example of a car that's fun to drive swiftly. Now, if somebody orders one of these cars, can they uh, pick the engine they want? Let's say sure. I, I'd like a 3.4 from a big, okay. We have options on the engine and on the gearbox. Yeah. Has anybody ordered one with an automatic? They've tried, but I don't recommend it because as you can see, the, the pedal spacing's pretty narrow now. Right, With yeah. an automatic, it would be much worse. And it really wouldn't feel right. Yeah. If you're nimble enough to get through these doors, you're nimble enough to drive yeah, a manual yeah. gearbox. 
I'm trying to figure out, were we nimble enough to get through these doors? Well, getting in's easy. Gravity does all the work. Yeah, yeah, The hard yeah. part will be getting out. Yeah. So let's not get out. Let's just keep driving. Okay. That's the key. It certainly is fun to drive. I mean, you're looking at, I mean, it's not a big car, but once you're in it, that hood looks really long. It's like an acre of louvers. I know, yeah. It's really fantastic. What does this have for shocks? Has it got tube shocks hidden somewhere in there? Yeah, it's got four coilovers in the back, okay. just like a late model, and two tube shocks up front. Yeah. They're hidden, and then you can see that it's got the dummy lever shocks in front for right, decoration. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because that was such an iconic part of the look of an SS. You had yeah. to have those. Yeah, yeah. Who makes tires for this? Are these Avons? These are Blockleys. Oh, Blockley, sure. Yeah. Blockley's a great tire company. They made Very all good. the original patterns for yeah. uh, uh, Bugatti and all of those people, yeah. I've done these with the original Dunlop tires, Yeah. and they just don't handle as nice as really? these. These are now, a better driving tire. Are the Blockley's available in the States here? Yeah. There's a trivia question. How many Squires did they build? You know, I used to know that. It's not many, but... Seven. Seven. You know his story? No. Adrian Squire was a student who built this car while a student. <laughs> Are you stuck? Okay. And he had all sorts of plans. And at age 21 or 22, he had built seven cars. And... Uh, and the blitz, a bomb came through, killed him, oh. uh, took him out. But he was um, quite an engineer. And the Squires were pretty. Yeah, they were a quality pretty car. Pretty cool. It's, you know, that is the one thing I miss, having not been born in that era, is you could start a car company in your garage. Yeah. yeah. You know, the technology wasn't beyond the average person. Well, there were 350 car companies in America in 1950. Yeah. And every year we lose 5 or 10%. I mean, in our lifetime, Oldsmobile, Pontiac, they're all gone. You know, this is the definition of English motoring. They go motoring in England. Exactly. And, and that's what this is. You know, if you're someone who likes classic cars, but you're not particularly mechanically inclined, you don't want to mess with electronics, and you're worried about safety, this is the perfect car. It really is, because everything in it is modern, it's new, it has the classic look, and it's exactly correct. Every proportion on this car is exactly the same. That's why it looks so right. That's why people mistake it for a real one. And even the, even the purists don't get mad when they see one that's done properly. So if, if you're someone who would like to have a classic car, but eh, doesn't want to go through all the rigmarole of taking it to the experts and you know, brakes at a marginal, boy, this is a fantastic way to do it. And if you want to drive somewhere, you could go cross country tomorrow in this. Yeah, you could go cross country tomorrow in this. You'd be divorced by the time you got there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll uh, take it up on the freeway. and you'll. This accelerates so much faster than the original. I mean, it's it's really supercar performance. I'll show you, take a look. Let's put it through the gears. Pulls very nicely. Certainly better than any uh, period Jag. Oh, yes. You just click it into overdrive, look at that. Just gotta play your loafing along now. That's it. I think I like it, I like hearing it. Yeah, it's geared very tall. It really doesn't need the overdrive unless you're really going a long distance high speed. All righty. Jason, I want to thank you for this opportunity. It was a lot of fun. Uh, as I said up in the hills, you know, this is a great car if you're someone who wants a brand new old car because it really is perfect. I mean, it's got all the running gear. It's way faster, it handles better, and it just looks, it looks great. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it's not a sports sports car. No, it's a, it's a 30s vintage car. Yeah, but it, it drives like a vintage car with, of course, the reliability of a modern car, which sounds kind of hackney because everybody says that. But it, it really does. I mean, I always enjoy your projects because they're always spot on. You know, they, I, I can't find one proportion on this that, that doesn't look like it came from the 1930s. It's, Thank you, Jay. It's, uh, it's really, really, really good. And... Uh, your website is, tell people what the website is. XKS.com. XKS.com. Is our company, and SS100.com if you want to learn more about these cars. Yeah. 
Okay. Jason, thanks again. We wait in your next project. Thanks, Jay. All right. See you guys later. See ya. Mm-hmm. <laughs>